Hi, I'm Tim Johnson. I started fishing with my folks when I was very young, using worms. <laughs> like most fly fishermen, we all started uh, with the basics. I transitioned to fly fishing in the 70s and started tying flies shortly after that. And one of the first flies I learned to tie was a fly called a gold rib hare's ear, which is a classic fly. Most people know how to tie that fly and have it in their box. This fly is going to be a variation on that called a posse booger. Um, so it's got a lot of pieces to it. I've uh, put the gold uh, bead on this fly already. Uh, this is a tungsten bead. This fly I use for weight to get other flies down. And uh, I will fish this both in still water and lakes and I'll fish it in rivers and uh, rivers with some current. So I really need some weight. I used so this is my weight, <laughs> but it's a very effective fly for catching fish. Uh, wow. Most people use it for trout, but it can also be used for warm water fish as well as for steelhead. So I start by putting some thread on this hook shank. This is a number 10 um, hook. The hooks are, um, have a number associated with them. It's, uh, it's loosely followed by the industry and it represents the size of this gap between the point and the shank. So this is classified as a, a 10. So, I so now for the wire. This is a lead-free lead wire. For years I used to use lead, but now we've learned that that's not a good thing to be introducing into our um, ecosystem. Uh, Try to keep it even so it doesn't bulk up the body later. And that kind of secures that weight down a little bit more. A lot of times I'll even put more weight than this on. But that's a good starting point. Now, the tail. This is a rabbit mask. And we take and cut off a little bit of uh, fur. How much to cut kind of depends on the size of the fly you're going to tie. It takes a little practice to get the right amount. I want my tail to be about, you know, lo no longer than the, the length of the shank. So I'm going to do a pinch wrap here. I pinch the uh, thread between my fingers and then pop it down. So then I'm going to just come forward, wrap all these loose ends down. This is a very flashy bug, like this uh, more conventional flashaboo. I think I'm going to use this today. In the sun, it's, uh, it just radiates. It serves two purposes. One is the fish can see it, obviously. It'll catch their attention. But these bugs will use air that they generate to get them um, to be more um, buoyant in the water. And, and that can be kind of flashy. So it's representing uh, something natural. As, as well as uh, an attractor. So I'm putting a couple strands of this into this tail. See that? A couple of them. One of the things I like about these rotary vices is you can move this fly around and uh, work on both sides of it pretty easily. In the old days, you had to move yourself around. So on the other side, same thing. A couple little strands of this flashaboo. And then cut that just a little bit longer than the tail. And there we go. So we got our flashaboo in our tail. For my ribbing, I use um, this oval, gold oval tinsel. I used to use flashable uh, for my ribbing. I have found this oval tinsel a lot stronger. I can catch a lot of fish on this fly. And now we'll tie the, um, the body. The reason it's called posse is because we use Australian possum for the body. It's, it, it, it functions similar to um, rabbit fur, but the strands are just a little bit longer. And that's uh, desirable. I'll show you in a little bit why that's desirable. So 
I just take some of that, form a little, what we call a doubled uh, du dubbing noodle on the, on the uh, thread. See how we can do that? And then wrap that forward. Sometimes you want to tighten it back up because it will come loose on you. Form a kind of a, a nice tapered body on this fly. Like that. I got a little bit left there, so I'll put that in there. Okay, and then I take my tinsel, my oval tinsel, and this is where you make this nice gold rib. Okay. Wrap that all the way forward, tie that off, and I can cut the tag off. The posse booger has a couple more components to it. Uh, one is this hackle, and the hackle can give the fish, uh, can give this fly some really nice movement in the wire, in the water. These fibers, as you'll see here, these barbs, as you're moving this fly around, move back and forth in the water and look like legs. Look like, they make this fly look like it's alive. Okay, so I tied that in by the tail using this little hackle grabber here to grab onto that, see how nicely that works. Some people fold these feathers back at this point, but I haven't found that really necessary. Now I'm wrapping my thread over that quill just to lock this in. Now I'll cut the quill. And then I pull these barbs back and wrap some, take a couple wraps over them just to hold them back like that. And then one thing about um, caddis pupas when they're emerging is usually their thorax will uh, turn dark. And so to represent that, I've got a little ice peacock dubbing here, black. So I'll pull some of that out and form a little loose noodle with that material. This is just sparkly in the, in the sun. Uh, this fly is all about sparkle. You can see it's got a lot of things that can uh, reflect in the sun. Okay, so we got our little black thorax in here now, which we want the fish to key on. And then uh, we finish it off with some um, half hitches. This little tool lets us do that very efficiently. It's called a whip finish. You can do that. Now, the last thing I do with this, I mentioned earlier that the fibers on that posse dubbing is long, and use a little stiff brush like this and work that body, I can pull some of those fibers out from underneath the ribbing. And it just gives the fly a little bit more material to move around in the, in the water. We call that, we're making it the fly buggy. All right, so there it is, the posse bugger. A great fly. I um, use this on top and then uh, often a dropper behind it. And I will either dead drift this, just throw it out there and try to let the current just take it with a natural drift. Um, I will, at the end of that drift, then let the line um, swing out. And when that happens, you can imagine the bug comes up. It's like an emerger. So this kind of is, really works well as an emerger pattern. You can see this could be wing, wings coming out of, a, out of its thorax as it's emerging. Um, sometimes I will just swing it. I won't even worry about dead drifting. It depends on the conditions. I'll just throw it out, cord it across the river, let it drop down a little bit, and then just let it swing out. And it's deadly.
Um, I highly recommend it. Why, my green.